Let's go over how to take an exam in Blackboard. This is an old Making Connections class, so don't get too excited. This is an old exam that's not used anymore, so don't get excited when you see the test questions and answers here in a minute. But I just wanted to go over what it looks like from the student side and how to do a test in Blackboard. Now I want to begin by saying that we now use ProctorU on this campus for all of our exams. They have to be uh, proctored by ProctorU, which is an outside company. And there's more information in that about ProctorU in Blackboard. We have a, a separate link that tells you all about ProctorU, and I'll do a video on ProctorU as well. But this is just what the exam looks like in Blackboard. We'll cover ProctorU in a different area. But first thing that you would want to do is go into Blackboard and find where that exam is. So in this case, we would be in week four of this class, and we know that all of our activities every week are under activities. So I'll click on that, and I can see my exam right here. Now every single instructor or professor will have different instructions for the exams. So you'll want to make sure that you read those very carefully before you start the exam. And if you have any questions before you start the exam, make sure that you let your professor know before you start it because usually on our end of things, the faculty's end, we set it to where you only get one attempt at taking these exams. So if you get into the exam and you have questions and you're confused about something and you go ahead and begin taking the exam, you can't stop and save it at that point and get back in and take it some other time. You have to finish it then. So make sure that you're clear on everything before you ever begin. So for your exam, you would come in and click the link for the exam. The instructions are there again, and again this will be different for every single professor that you have. And once you're clear on everything and you're ready to take the exam, you click begin. There will be a password set up for all of your exams that require ProctorU, and this is just the way that us as faculty ensure that you are using ProctorU for your exam and that you are being proctored and you're that's just the way we, we make sure that you're not cheating in any way. You won't have the password to take the exam. The proctor in ProctorU will have the password and they will plug that in here. So you'll have to go through ProctorU. This ensures that we, that we get you guys to go through ProctorU. They will have the password and you won't. So you will not be able to take this exam unless you go through ProctorU. So once the proctor has entered the password for you, you'll click Submit and that will begin you taking your test. Now I'm using Google Chrome here. It asked if I wanted to remember that password for this exam. I'm going to say nope because I only get one chance to take this exam. This particular exam allows you two hours to take it. My class, you'll have 60 minutes to take the exams and all of the exams are only 10 questions each so that gives you way enough time. You'll have plenty of time to take these. You can see this exam also is just 10 questions, so you've got plenty of time to take this exam. Now some of your professors, they might have a lot more questions in their exams, so you'll need to allocate your time accordingly and make sure that you have enough time to take your exam. So I'll just go through here and I'm just going to enter the questions. This exam is set up to where it only gives you one question at a time, and if it's set up that way, then once you click Submit or you click this arrow to go on to the next question, you don't get to go back and change your response. So make sure that it's definitely what you want to answer before you click that next arrow button. Now if you want to think about it, you, I think it might be C, but I'm not sure. I'm going to click on C and click Save Answer. And then I can go back and think about it a little bit more. And if I need to change it, I can. And then when I click that arrow button, it's going to take that new answer. So I'm just going to go through and keep submitting my question, my answers to my questions. Obviously you would take more time than this. But in the spirit of you guys actually getting something out of this video, I'm just going to put answers down and submit them so we can get through this quickly. Okay, here we go. One last question. You can see on this last question, question 10 of 10, it has a save and submit button right here. That's how you submit your exam. 
So I'm going to click Save and Submit. It's going to ask me, am I sure? I'm going to click OK. And now I'm done with my exam. So test saved and submitted. This lets me know that I have done the exam correctly. And now I'm going to click this OK button. And that when it, that's when it actually gives you my grade and my feedback. So I got 10 out of 100 points. Wow. If I would have taken my time, I could have done a lot better. But you can see that it gives you the feedback. I selected B, the correct answer was A. So you can go back and see why you missed everything here. And once you're do done reviewing your exam, you click OK. And it's all saved automatically in Blackboard. So I'm going to exit this old class and get into our class to show you some of my specific instructions for my exams. So let me go back to making connections for my class. Let's go into student view so it will look like you look like you see it. And our first exam is in week two so it's going to be under week two activities and it's about the ASU policies. So here's where mine looks a little bit different. You'll click on this exam, this link right here, and you'll go through that same process again of taking the exam. But I wanted to go over these steps and instructions that I have for my, my exams in particular. You will have to use ProctorU to take all of your exams for my class. And we'll have information about ProctorU over here. I'll have a video on how to set it up and how to make your appointments and everything. But you need to know you will not be able to take any of my exams unless you go through ProctorU because you're not going to have that password to take the exam. You always need to make sure that you block off enough time to complete your exam. I give you 60 minutes to complete all of my exams. That's plenty of time because there's only 10 questions each in all of these exams. Make sure that your family and your friends, your roommates, your kids, whoever might be in your workspace knows that you're taking an exam and that you need some quiet time to do your work. Um, this will also be a requirement for ProctorU because the proctor will actually use your webcam to watch you take your exam and make sure you're not cheating. And if you have families and friends and roommates and all this going on behind you, they're going to flag that to me because they assume that you might be cheating. And then I'll have to go in and review it and see if you did indeed cheat because there are people around you. So save us all the headache and <laughs> make sure that you don't have anyone around you talking while you take your exam. Uh, number three, this is not a team effort. This test is your own test to take. Don't share answers. You're responsible for your own learning. ProctorU helps us with number three because they watch you take the exam and they make sure that you don't cheat. You're not going to be able to open up any of the websites on your computer without them knowing it. So you're not going to be able to Google stuff. You won't be able to have your phone there with you to try to cheat. So just make sure that you don't cheat. Plain and simple. Study for your exam. Take it yourself and you don't have to worry about this being an issue. If you do get caught cheating, uh, automatically we'll give you a zero for that exam and then it's up to me whether I present that to our administration or not because you can get kicked out of the program completely. So don't put me in that situation. Just study on your own and take your exam on your own and we won't have to worry about that. Number four, save each answer as you progress through the test. This is just a recommendation. You don't necessarily have to do it. But if something happens and you haven't saved each answer, all of your work will be lost. You only have one attempt for the test, so you don't want to lose the work that you've already done. So if you click that Save button each time before you go on to the next question, it'll at least save what you've done up to that point. And that kind of goes with this next one, number five. If you use a wireless connection to take the exam, there might be an electrical surge or all kinds of things that can happen if you use a wireless source. And if that happens, your exam automatically submits. And if you haven't answered any questions up to that point, you don't get a chance to answer them again. You'll be kicked off and it'll grade what you have done. If it even does that, it might lose everything that you've done completely. And remember again, you only get one attempt to take this test. And since I'm telling you right now that you don't need to use wireless, if you come to me and say, Ms. Bracey, I got kicked off, I was using wireless and there was a surge and it kicked me off and I didn't complete my exam, since I'm telling you right now not to do that, I will not have mercy on you. 
So that's something you need to be aware of. I'm not going to reset the test if you're kicked off due to a wireless issue. What you need to do is make sure that you plug your computer into a power source if you're using a laptop. If you're using a desktop, it will already be plugged into the wall. And make sure that you plug into a high-speed internet source. That means that you're using a cord to connect to your internet source, not a wireless connection. Just because I don't want you to get kicked off and it not have any results there and you get a zero for the test. Make sure that you have your pop-ups enabled on your browser. The exam that you just saw me take, it was all within Blackboard. There was no pop-ups at all. But some of your instructors might set their exams up to be popped up in a new window for you to take that exam. So if you don't have your pop-ups enabled on your browser, then you're not going to be able to take that exam. So do a Google search for enabling pop-up browsers on your browser and set that up so that if any of your professors ever do set their exams up to pop up in a new window that you'll be able to see all of that information. Um, go to the Flash website and the Java website to test your computer to make sure everything is updated before you take any exams because sometimes your exams might have you watch a video, um, they might have you do something a little bit extra, they might have you actually listen to something and answer a question on whatever audio that you just listened to. And if you don't have your Flash and Java updated, you might not be able to do that. Again, if they only have the exam set up for one attempt, you only get one chance to take it. And if you're in the middle of your exam and it says your Flash is not updated or your Java is not updated, you're not going to be able to stop the exam and update that stuff and then go back to the exam. So do all of that stuff before you take the exam. Don't take any test on an iPad or an iPhone or any other mobile device. Um, first things first, there is a Blackboard, Blackboard Learn app that you can download, but you cannot take exams in that app. And if you try to take the exam in the browser app that's on your iPad or iPhone or whatever else you're using, it's not going to work correctly. So you have to use a computer, get a desktop or a laptop to do this. Um, if you are using a mobile device and you get kicked off and it doesn't submit, again, I'm not going to have mercy. I'm not going to reset the test because I'm telling you to do all that right now before you take your exams. So that's exams in a nutshell. There's a little link here that you can click that will take you to the Blackboard website where there's more information. Oh my gosh, I need to update my flash player. <laughs> but in any case, this right here, this link right here will take you to Blackboard Learn their website and there are videos on there that walk you through the same process that I just walked you through. And if you have questions about our exams or any concerns about it before you start the exam, that's when you need to ask me. Don't go in and start the exam and then say, oh, I should have asked this beforehand. I wasn't clear on that. Before you take the exam is when you need to ask questions. So if you do have any questions, just email me and let me know.